God will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory, because the word says so. Psalms 47 1 says, clap your hands. Let's say this together. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. That means he doesn't want his kids coming whine. Nothing worse than a parent having a kid that's whiny, complaining, has, you know, just always, you know, negative Nancy, <laughs> doubting Don. <laughs> Nothing like having a kid that wants to whine and cry. Nothing like having a happy child. And all the parents said, you know, I'm telling you, even if you got a boyfriend or girlfriend, you don't want one that's whiny. You want that one that's happy. Amen? You want a spouse that's happy. God has children, and he wants us to be happy. And why aren't we happy? Because we keep getting our eyes on the wind and the waves instead of what he already did. Amen? Psalms chapter 2. Psalms 2, 4. Let's say this all together. Psalms, I'm sorry, Psalms 47. Oh, I already said that. I'm sorry. No, I'm right. Psalms 4. Psalms 2, 4. <laughs> Amen. Psalms chapter 2 and verse 4 says, the one, let's say it together. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Psalms 2, 4. And we're all together now. Let's say it loud and proud. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. So what is the Lord doing right now? He's scoffing. <laughs> He's laughing. The one in heaven laughs. He is laughing at who? Our enemies. God wants us to act like he does. When you get an enemy, you laugh at him. Nothing that will torment an enemy more than laughing at them. Don't you hate when somebody laughs at you, not with you, but laughing at you? We're not laughing with the devil. We're laughing at him. Amen. And God says in his word that he laughs at them. Proverbs 15, 15. There's going to be a lot, guys. You're going to have to move fast. Proverbs 15, 15. All the day, let's say it together. <laughs> you have to stay jiggy with it here. Proverbs 15, 5. Let's say it together. 15, 15, sorry. I guess I'm going to have to say them right then. <laughs> Proverbs 15, 15 says, all together. All the days of the oppressed are wretched, but the cheerful heart has a continual feast. Amen? So if we're going to be moping and groping, we're not going to have any feast. <laughs> we're going to be sitting out by the garbage dump. Now Psalms 126. Psalms 126, starting at verse 1. Amen? It's good to see what the Word says about every situation in our life. Psalm 126 and starting with verse 1. Are we ready? 126, 1. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. How many of you, the Lord has done good things for you? Did, were you able to keep up with me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> one more time. Psalms 126, verse 1. Are you going to go to one and then two and then three? We're going to do <laughs> my point in case right here. Okay, verse one. Let's say it together. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter. Our tongues were songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord... Woo, okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. James 1. James 1. <laughs> yeah, we know this one. <laughs> uh, uh, 
James 1, in J verse 2, James 1, 2. Let's see how fast he is back there. <laughs> i got to put this on. It's getting warm up here. <laughs> okay. I don't want to get too windy. <laughs> are we ready here? <laughs> Where, what are we on? What are we? <laughs> James. Okay, James 1 and verse 2. We should know this by heart, right? Consider it pure joy. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. God is working on our perseverance. Amen? We don't grow and we don't stretch if we don't go through tests and trials. How many of you know when everything's going good, you're just like, la, la, la. <laughs> you don't grow and stretch and develop until you're going through a tough time. Amen? Now let's look at Philippians 4.4, another one we all know by heart. <laughs> Philippians 4.4, but we are still going to put it up on the screen, I hope. <laughs> Philippians 4.4. 4. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> He's getting quicker back there. Okay, uh, let's read it together. Amen. Isn't it funny that God has to sometimes repeat himself? <laughs> Because sometimes we're a little thick skulled. All right, let's go to First Peter. First Peter one. First Peter one. She's got the joy of the Lord. One time we went to service, and uh, this is when Chase was probably he wasn't even one. He was probably about six months old. And we went to a doctor to frame meeting. We got in late, and they ushered us to like the second roll, like right about there. And we had him in his carrying seat. So we're like trying to put it in the in front of us between the seats and he's sitting there and he's dr defrain's just preaching and all of a sudden he just like would stiffen up and go Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! and i'm like oh my gosh <laughs> i take him to the nursery and 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 dr defrain just came around the corner and he just like looked at him he goes that's the holy ghost <laughs> that was the holy and he just kept doing that <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, children are more sensitive to the thing. <laughs> the things of God. Where are we? Okay, first Peter one. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> first Peter one eight. And we're gonna read this out loud. Yeah, good to take notes, write these down, read them again at home, study them, memorize them. Because the Lord, you're gonna go through some things, the Lord's go, what happened to that scripture? <laughs> All right, 1 Peter 1, and starting at verse 8. We're going to do 8 and 9. Okay, let's say it together. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious. <laughs> For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? All right, let's do this part. Jeez. All right, let's say it together. For you are receiving the... <laughs> this just seems so much better than it seems. <laughs> All right, Psalm 16. <laughs> uh, I like that because it said you believe. That's Psalm 1611 for you back there. I like it because it says you believe in him and are, <laughs> and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. He said, joy unspeakable and full of glory. <laughs> now, God is a faith God <laughs> because he believes that because we believe in him, that we should have joy unspeakable and full of glory. He's like, look at my children. Look at my children. They believe in me, even though they don't see me. And it has filled them with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Look how happy my children are. This is how God sees us, full of joy. <laughs> He's like, I don't see that. They are full of joy. 
All right, where are we at now? Psalms 116, Psalm, Psalm 16, 16, verse 11. Let's say this together. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Woo! There's something about the presence of God that you can't be sad in. Sometimes you'll get tears of joy, but you won't be mad and you won't be sad. Amen? Romans 14. Was he being loud? <laughs> Psalms, I mean Romans 14. Jeez. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kitty, you don't have it yet? Yes, I did. Romans 14, 17. <laughs> Romans 14, 17, and 18. Now let's read this. Let's read this together. For the kingdom of God is not. <laughs> Sorry, let's start over. <laughs> what did I say? Nat. Nat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way, what happened? <laughs> Did you not have the script? Okay, because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. <laughs> the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God. I would say that if you're not serving God in this way, it would be displeasing. Amen? Anyone who serves, serves unrighteous and termal, tumultuous and sad and gloomy is not pleasing to God. <laughs> say, I, I have righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. We are pleasing to God. Let's look at Psalms 118. What a fiasco. This was just seeming so smooth in my head. <laughs> She's got it. <laughs> okay. What did I say? Psalms 118 and 24. Jeez. <laughs> Psalms 118, 24. The Lord has done... <laughs> Oh, I thought it said, okay. Let's sing it together. I mean. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go to the bathroom. <laughs> All right, where, where are we at? Okay, let's see it. Like, like Paul said, I come to you without eloquence of speech. <laughs> I don't know what is going on. Okay, where, which one is it? <laughs> Did we say it yet? Okay, let's say it together. Or you all say it. <laughs> you all say it out loud. Go ahead. Okay. 25. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like it went with it. <laughs> Say it all together. <laughs> okay. Ha <laughs> ha. 
said, oh my gosh, where are my glasses? <laughs> okay, where, what was that? What was that one? Psalms 40, okay. Okay, John 15. <laughs> oh, geez. John 15. Now, these are the words of Jesus. And he spoke this to his disciples. So when he spoke this, this was before he ascended. And it was before the day of Pentecost. So we're way on the other side of the scripture in the day of the fulfillment of it. It's not like Jesus is still waiting for this to happen. I, <laughs> John 15, 9. <laughs> I just want you to have a background on the scripture. That <laughs> Jeez. I, so you understand that Jesus, when he said these words, was expecting that after the day of Pentecost, that this was going to be fulfilled, okay? <laughs> so we get the background? <laughs> All right, which one was it? John, John 15, 9, starting of John 15, 9, and we're going to go through 12. So be ready, 9 through 12. We're going to read it together. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. 9, 15, No, what I'm reading, <laughs> John, it's John 15. Okay, oh, that's right, you got it right. Did I say that? <laughs> John 15, verse 9, okay, through 12. All right, let's read it together, out loud. So when Jesus spoke this over 2,000 years ago, she's fine. She's fine. They can take over. We're casual here. <laughs> Let her have her way around the, around the house. <laughs> so you have to understand that when Jesus spoke these words, he fully intended by the day of Pentecost that they were going to be full of joy. And he fully intended that from that point on, that we would have joy unspeakable and full of glory. He expected that if we had the Holy Ghost, we would have joy. Now, let me just say, sometimes you might not feel, this is what I love about the Word and, uh, and about God. Nothing has to do with feelings. Feelings come and go, and good feelings are good, but no matter how your feelings are, <laughs> amen.